Welcome to Electron Line. Now we're finally ready to solve our first catenary problem. We had to have all these equations available and we need to know where they came from. We need to have justification for them. So now let's go ahead and look at our problem. We have a hanging cable. The span, the length from point A to point B is 100 meters, but that doesn't mean the length of the cable is 100 meters. The length of the cable will be S and will be greater than 100 meters. The distance from the origin here, from the bottom, to the support points, that's considered y sub b, or y sub a on this side, and at this point they'll be the same length, and then x, the distance from the origin to the support points on either side, will be half the distance of 100 meters, or 50 meters. We're given that the sag of the cable h is equal to 20 meters, and the objective is to find S, the length of the cable, the tension at the bottom of the cable, which is the minimum tension, and the maximum tension, which is the tension at the connect point. That's where the angle relative to the horizontal of the cable is the greatest. We can say here that X sub B, in this case, the distance from here to the support point B is equal to 50 meters, and we can say that Y sub B is equal to, well, the distance from there to there will be H plus C, and since we know what h is, it will be 20 meters plus c. We're going to start with this equation right here. We're going to start with y is equal to c times the hyperbolic cosine of x divided by c. And since y at b is equal to 20 plus c, we can write this as 20 plus c equals c times the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. Now when we divide that equation, both sides of that equation, by c, we get the following. We get 20 divided by c plus 1 is equal to the hyperbolic cosine of x over c. Now the question is, what will be the value for c that will make the left side equal to the right side? And at first sight, you say, well, I can't figure that out because I don't know how to calculate that. I have c on both sides of the equation, and I don't know how to solve that. But we can do that using an iterative process, and of course, at some point, you may want to use a small computer program in order to calculate that. But let me show you what the program would do, and we can actually do it by hand using a calculator. So we're going to plug in some values for c. Then we're going to calculate the value, the hyperbolic cosine of x over c, and then we're going to calculate the value of 20 divided by c plus 1. And what we have to then do is keep finding values and zero in on the point where the value of c will make this equal to that. That will be our stopping point. Then we'll know the correct value for c. So it's going to take a few guesses. But let's say we start with the value for c equal to 20. If we let c equal 20, and we know that x is equal to 50, we need to take the hyperbolic cosine of 50 divided by 20, which is 2.5, take the inverse cosine of, uh, of that, and we get 6.132. We get 6.132, and plugging that in here, we see 20 divided by 20, that's 1 plus 1, which gives us 2, and they're not, of course, equal to one another. So let's try a bigger value and see what we get. Now, of course, if the bigger value makes us go farther apart, then we're going in the wrong direction, then we need to make it a smaller value. But if we let c equals 40, now we have 50 divided by 40. 5 divided by 4, which is 1.25. Take the hyperbolic cosine of that, we get 1.888. And here, 20 divided by 40, which is 1 half plus 1, is 1.500. Notice that this got smaller, but this got smaller faster, and the difference is becoming less. So we're, in the, we're moving in the right direction. Let's now let c equal 60. So 50 divided by 60, that's 5 divided by 6. Take the hyperbolic cosine of that, we get 1.368. And here, 20 divided by 60, that would be one third, that would be 1.333. We're getting very close, but not quite there yet. Uh, let's, uh, we're getting close. Let's try 65 and see what happens. So 65, so we get 50 divided by 65. 5 equals, take the hyperbolic cosine of that, and I get 1.311, 1.311. 1 
And then let's see what we get here. We have 20 divided by 65 plus 1 equals, we get 1.308. Notice this is still bigger than that, so this is still not quite big enough, and we're getting very close. Hmm, how about like a half? Let's try 65.5. And sometimes you pick a number that's too big and then you go backwards. Well, we'll see what happens. So x, which is 50, divided by 65.5, and take the hyperbolic cosine of that, we get 1.306. 1.306. And over here, we get 20 divided by 65.5 plus 1 equals 1.305. 1.305. Well, in the interest of time, that's pretty close. I may try to get a little closer than that, but to me, that's close enough. I'm going to say victory. I found the right value for C. I'm going to plug that into my equations and find all the things I need to find. So I've determined, therefore, that C is equal to 65.5 to make the left side equal to the right side. Now, can I find all the various things I'm looking for? First of all, let's find the length of the cable. Well, to do that, I need to find Y, S, and C. Well, let's see here. What about Y? Y is simply the sum of H plus C. Let's do that. So since Y is H plus C, and H is given, that was 20 meters, and C now we know is plus 65.5 meters, that means that the height from here to the attach point has to be 85.5 meters. Now that we have y, we can find s. Over here we have the equation y squared minus s squared equals c squared, or s squared equals y squared minus c squared, or s equals the square root of y squared minus c squared. Using that equation over here, s equals the square root of y squared minus c squared is equal to the square root of y being 85.5 squared minus C, which is 65.5 squared, is equal to, all right, 85.5, we square that, minus 65.5 squared equals, take the square root, and we get 54.95, ah, close enough to 55 meters. Now, that's, of course, not the length of the whole cable. That's simply the length from this point to this point. And if I want to then find the whole length of the cable, so S total will then, of course, be the left side and the right side, which is 2 times S, which is 2 times 55 meters, or the length of the cable is 110 meters. Now that we have the length of the cable, let's see if we can find the minimum tension, which is the tension at the bottom of the cable, and the maximum tension, which is the tension at the attach point. And for that, we have two really nice equations. First of all, we can use this equation right here to find the minimum tension. T sub naught is equal to C times W. C, again, we have 65.5. This is equal to 65.5 meters. Multiply times the weight per unit length, which was given to us as 50 newtons per meter. 50 newtons per meter, which will give us a value of, let's see here, 65.5 times 50 equals 3,275 newtons. And the maximum tension, that's T, at attach point B is equal to, and that would be right here, and of course that would be the weight per unit length times Y at B, which is equal to 50 newtons per meter times the distance from the origin to the attach point, y sub b, and that would be equal to 85.5 meters, which is equal to 50 times 85.5 equals, that would be 4,275 newtons. And that's how we find the length of the cable, the minimum tension, and the maximum tension on the cable. Notice there's a difference of a thousand newtons between those. And notice, starting with this equation right here, 
converting it to this form and then finding values of c to the point where this will equal that and that gives you the proper value for c and there's only one way to do it the iterative process as is shown and that's how you solve catenary problems